In 2012, scientists discovered something incredible that changed the course of the atomic science. In the year 2008, the European Organization for Atomic Research, CERN, built the giant tubes and a circular earth of 27 kilometers in the city of Geneva, which is located in an area close to the borders of France and Switzerland. This experiment that called LHC or Large Hydron Collider was a great opportunity to simulate and creating a mini Big Bang and we observed the Higgs boson using this experiment which was predicted by the theoretical physicist Peter Hex from the UK and Francois Englert from Belgium and for that they won a Nobel Prize in 2030. There was an important question for the basic atoms and the question is where does their mass come from? Well, we will talk about it right now. Before we talk about this wonderful experiment, let's talk more about particles. We all know that everything in the universe is made of molecules and these molecules are created from smaller atoms and one atom consists of proton and neutron and an electron if we continue this process more we will reach to tiny particles called quarks and its different types distinguishes between the proton and neutron and if you know this information before, you know that similar particles are expelling each other because of the similarity and charge, and it is attraction that occurs to two particles with a different charge, and they share the charge or annihilate each other. After the development in the field of quantum science and particle science, scientists were able to create a table of model of four particles by explaining and it all kinds of particles which form and explain to us the mechanism of the universe. The table is divided into two main parts. The first one made of two fundamental particles that represent for us all kinds of matter in the universe. The second one called the boson represent all fundamental forces of the universe except gravity. According to the implicit theory of the table, the particle responsible for the fundamental forces are supposed to be massless. So all boson particles are massless like the photon and the gluon. However, boson W and boson Z have the largest mass after the muon and top particles. These two particles have the greatest responsibility in the process of proton and neutron calvage. And this process represents for us the weak nuclear forces, which we talked about previously. Particles that have weak nuclear forces, it is impossible to have a, such a massive mass with the continuation of the process of change and interaction that take place between atoms and particles. There must be something that gives the particles the ability to possess or gain mass. After the idea of Peter Higgs, the question of the source of particle mass got easier for scientists. In short, without the Higgs boson, mass is impossible to exist by itself. And the responsible idea that the particles that are supposed to not have mass but they have uh, is the idea of the Higgs field. The Higgs field creates the possibility for us that the basis for the formation of mass in the particles came from it. And it is impossible for the universe to form without it. After we learn the basis, we can start talking more about the LHC experiment. This experiment aims to answer many complex questions of physics, such as calculating the pro properties of the Higgs boson and explaining the particles possession of mass and learning more about the secret of the matter and antimatter. What we need in this process is the proton. The proton is a subatomic pro particle and it's present in every atomic element 
and this makes the testing process easier for us. As the proton is a subatomic, this also creates the possibility for us to accelerate and add energy to the motion of the proton. And by this experiment, the motion of proton is accelerated to speed almost equal to the speed of light. This experience is one of the greatest ways in history through which humans were able to accelerate the movement of the particle. Let's explain the motion of the proton in this experiment. The proton's journey starts from a device called the liner accelerator, in which there's an electromagnetic circuit which gives the proton a push forward force. After that, the protons will travel in a series of rings, which for the first time aim to accelerate the movement of protons before entering the second ring. After entering the second ring, the protons will move at breakneck speed given by the magnetic bins. These bins, which are made of magnetic coils, are present in tubes that add a force equal to 300 to 400 metric tons of force per meter. So the protons can move to speed close to the speed of light. Besides speed, the magnetic beams also help to ensure that the protons move in a straight line. After that, the protons will split into a tube carrying two groups in order for the protons to move in two different directions. And then the two groups of protons will move to the major ring. Protons will cross from different points of this, of this circuit and then protons collide with each other. However, there's a one point in this ring where the collision wave is strong, and on its way to that point, it is passing through something called the resonator, or Hertz wave detector, in which there's a large movement of electromagnetic wave. When the protons enter the detector, the protons will move with the movement of the wave to the other side, and the wave movement will change to the opposite side of the detector and the opposite protons will move to the other direction and loop continues. The Higgs boson was discovered in 2013 and these collision of protons and the most famous collisions in this experiment are ATLAS and CMS. And CMS or the compact mole solenoid every 25 nanoseconds two groups of proton collide and when the protons collide, it looks like this. This collision explains many of the protons' secrets. From the first angle, we were able to distinguish between the bends that occur in them and through them. We will know whether the charge is positive or negative, and we will be able to determine the moment and velocity of the particle's motion and the collision. This is the same as throwing balls on each other to know what they are made of. Likewise, we throw proton at each other to see what they are made of. Physicists, when they were observing this process, they were able to know from what the proton is made of. And it turns out that the finer bodies that are formed are neutrons, kaons, neutrinos, muons, and pions. This group of particles is called the hydrons and that's why it's called the Large Hydron Collider. The collision of protons similar to this experiment reveal many secrets related to the small infrastructure of the universe. This process was very difficult and almost was impossible because we use in this process hydrogen gas so we collide two whole atoms for the process of uh, collapsing the protons. But the problem is the 99.999% of the atom is empty space. So it was difficult to make the protons collide with each other. It's like two men are standing 10 kilometers apart and they shoot each other and hope that one of the bullets will hit each other. But in some way, and with the help of magnetic coils, scientists have been able to succeed in this experiment. Scientists also have a preliminary collision analyze sheet in which we see the presence of a blip here and this proves the existence of the Higgs boson. It was difficult to spot the Higgs boson because in short the period which the Higgs lived 
is very short. The duration that the Higgs resists chronologically is 10 to the power of minus 23 seconds. Or for more clarification, the Higgs boson lives for 0.23 zeros one of second. It's very awesome for Peter Higgs and Francois Engler to protect in something great like this 84 years ago. This actually proved the correctness of their mathematical operation and equations. And this is the story that tells how the Higgs boson became part of the standard model table. And who knows, maybe in the future, we will observe more particles and maybe also discover more secrets about the universe itself. However, if the Higgs boson is the creator, the mass of the particle, then why does it not have such a massive mass as the top quark? Speaking of the top quark, how does this particle move in the universe with such a heavy mass? Well. We will leave this topic for another video. Until that day, don't stop wondering and be curious.